Hey folks, as you can see, I've got two Celestron SCTs here. If you've seen any of my previous videos or photos, you would have seen me with this one. This is a CPC 800 or an eight inch tube. And I've just upgraded to the nine and a quarter inch of the same model. Um, I was very fortunate that I bought these two secondhand. So I was able to see, lift them, try them out before purchase. But if you're like me and you're doing all of your astronomy from a very small space and you need to carry your telescope and set it up every time you want to use it, if you're wondering what these are like to carry and maneuver around, this is the video that I wished I could see before committing to either of these. I'm actually really, really pleased with the CPC model. It's brought me lots of joy in the last two years. I've done the whole solar system with it and lunar imaging and the International Space Station. And when I was choosing which model telescope to get for myself, this is the one that ticked all the boxes, basically. What I didn't want was to have to put the tube onto the fork every time I was using it. So hold the tube and then tighten the dovetail. So I was really drawn to this double fork setup. And unlike some of the single fork mounts that have the same size fork for both tubes, which means that this one is then sitting at the top weight limit, this one, the CPC model, has its own size double fork, which really adds the stability. And what I also really like is that you can sort of undo both clutches for manual tracking for the International Space Station. But if you have to take your telescope outside, so carry it and then set it up every time, there are a few points to consider. First, apart from the difference in, in size, there is also a significant difference in weight. It's enough to notice. I am 1 meter 65, so like 5 foot 4, I think. And so notice what they look like next to me. And I can pretty independently lift the 8 inch, but with this one, I feel like I'm already at the limit of my abilities. I'm going to put them both down now so that you can see how they both lift onto the tripod. So the whole thing with these is that you have to lift the tube and the mount assembly as one unit and you have to be able to lift it kind of with your arms outstretched to your waist level. With the 8 inch this feels pretty sturdy and balanced but with the 9 and a quarter inch because it's so much taller the width of them is pretty similar. But this one is so much taller that I feel a little bit of a sway when I'm trying to lift it off the ground. Um, there is a really, really great handle here on one side. And then on the other side, there's a nook where you can put your hand. I can see why they did this because the handset sits here and then there is a clutch on this side. But I really would have loved another handle because once you've put your hand here, your arm is kind of stuck in that position and it would be really nice to be able to kind of move your arms whichever way you like. And then once you've lifted them, you still have to be in control because the middle of it has to go into this pin here before it goes in with these three screws. But after that, once it's on, it feels really sturdy. There's no play in the mount. It just feels really solid. And now please enjoy the awkwardness of me trying to put them both onto the tripods. The saving grace is that the tripod can operate on different heights. So if I put it on the lowest height, I can get the nine and a quarter inch on more easily, which is what I'm going to end up doing 90% of the time.
And as soon as they went onto the tripods, it started raining, in case you were ever wondering what it's like doing anything astronomy related in the UK. So I'll just wrap it up by saying that the specs for these are available online on the Celestron website or any other retailer website. They're absolutely packed with all sorts of little nice perks. That's why I really enjoy using them. My favorite things are the crosshair finder here. Called me old fashioned, but I really like a crosshair finder rather than the red dot because I just find it so much more intuitive to use. And the telescope has inbuilt GPS and it has something called solar system line. So if you're, for example, if your only goal is to be imaging Jupiter, you can align on it and the telescope will track it well enough to keep in frame while you're imaging. So that's what I end up using most of the time. And finally, if it's worth going from eight inch to nine and a quarter inch optically, um, that's for you personally to decide. For me, it is because I find imaging so exciting that every single tiny speck of detail extra that I can pull out of a picture is already worth it for me. It's really exciting. So once planetary season starts here in about two months time, I'm going to be doing comparisons of images that I've taken with both of them. And uh, hopefully you can see what I've gained from the upgrade. Until then, thank you everyone.